Hi, welcome to July 16th, because that's what it is when this posts, but welcome uh, to According to Pete. Uh, today we're going to talk about potential projects. Um, I rattled off in uh, the previous episode or two episodes ago uh, a bunch. I'm going to talk about three. We're going to talk about all of them in brief um, and I'm going to describe the scope of the project scope. <laughs> the first one is going to be my Dobsonian mount telescope. I know that's not funny. I'm really sorry. I can't help myself. Um, but I'm going to talk about it and describe uh, that project. It's big. Let's talk about what a Dobsonian mount is. I'm sure some of you guys are going to know this, um, but let me first talk about an equatorial mount for a telescope, which again, I'm sure some of you guys know what this is. You have, let's say, the North Star, right? This is like uh, the, the, the center. This is how the sky works, sort of, kind of. Um, everything revolves around this point, right? If you could point to the North Star and just sit there, everything else in the sky will turn while the North Star stays right there, okay? So the way that an equatorial mount works is that you have two axes, right? You set one of them, you, you point one of them at the North Star, okay? And then to track anything, you just have like this other axis that goes around, okay? It's a polar thing. The whole point behind the equatorial mount is to make it easy to track things in the sky, right? So if you want to do photography or something like that, you only have to have like one motor drive going at a time because you've already got the thing pointed at the North Star and you only have to go around in a circle. That's pretty cool. This is a Dobsonian mount. And as you can see, it's got an axis like this and it's also got an axis like this. Now the bearing surfaces are not great. Um, they are, in fact, just bits of Teflon. You got a piece here and a piece here, and it rides on this guy here. Um, the base, it, this, this turns well enough. You can operate it with your hand. Eh, it's pretty easy. Um, the base is a lot harder to turn. Um, and granted, this is a few years old. <clears throat> I haven't cleaned it recently. You can probably see tons of dust on it. Um, but there you go. Um, now, why would somebody want one of these over an equatorial? Well because it makes it a lot cheaper, okay? Um, if you were to pay for an equatorial mount 10 inch reflector like this, uh, it's, it's many thousands of dollars. This one I got on sale for like less than 500 bucks like 10 years ago or something. So I got a really good deal, provided I don't want to track anything in the sky, I just point, you know? Eh, it works well enough. Um, now let's talk about what it's gonna take to motorize this thing so that I can track things. A lot of the challenge in front of me with this project is mechanical in nature. In order to drive this thing, um, the surfaces have to be much more fluid, okay? So it's going to take, uh, you know, some kind of motor, some kind of motor driver. It's probably going to have to be on a worm gear, both axes, right? Because things in the sky, they move real slowly, but they move real steadily, okay? Um, so it's probably going to be on a worm gear, and the worm gear is probably going to be driven far out from each axis, okay? So that you have really, really good resolution and you don't get funky little jagged bits. It, it, it may be possible that I just ditch that mount entirely and build a new one out of two, not two by four, two by fours, and electric tape and, and copper wire. No, um, out of uh, like, like maybe a, a plywood box. And uh, you saw the, the, the main axis that the scope turns on is a wheel about that big. And I'd probably blow it out to about that big and then have a worm gear on that so I get really good resolution on that thing. The electronics, let's talk a little bit more about that. I did say, you know, paramotors, some motor drivers. Um, there's going to have to be a microcontroller. Um, do, 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 do. And you're also, yeah, GPS, right? You might not think about this, but you really, you need to know where you are on the planet so that this thing can track right, okay? It needs to know what direction it's pointing, which the GPS isn't going to be able to reliably give it because GPS heading sucks if it's not moving. So we'll need a magnetometer that's got really good resolution We'll need a GPS so that the thing can figure out where on the planet it actually is. Um, and then there will be a whole bunch of math behind it to figure out how something is tracking and how to drive both motors. 
Um, because like I said, on, on the Equatorial, you only got to drive one and that's pretty easy because, you know, this is a, a distance out from the axis determines your, your speed. Uh, where this is going to be both motors driving all the time at some varying speed. So there's going to be a bunch of math behind that. Am I afraid of that math? Nah. And that's the scope of that project. Um, it's not small, it's big. Now, let's talk about the next one. This is a Jackson RR3, I think it is. Um, yeah, fancy metal guitar, man. Yeah, man. It sounds halfway decent, but I'll be honest with you, it doesn't play very well. The neck is just sort of okay. It's sort of sticky. It's sort of fat. And I don't know. Les Paul necks are good, but I don't know. This is. And then it does. I keep showing this to Greg. And it's such a pain. Um, but the electronics are good. It does look awfully fancy, does it not? So, um, but since it's not the thing I play the most, uh, I am gonna volunteer it for this project. Now, let's talk about the project. Um, what I want to do, <coughs> or the first idea that I was uh, going to try out, was to create um, a lighting system on this thing that lights different colors based on the notes that you play, okay? So you have to read the note, you have to do like uh, some kind of frequency analysis, and then light an LED, okay? Now, the first thing that would leap to mind is that, oh, I can't remember the name of the part. I'm gonna have to look this up and put it in the comments. MSQ7 something something. Uh, it's a chip that we sell. We even have a shield for it that does like seven bands of analysis and will give you levels according to each band. But I'd like something with a little more resolution than that, so it's probably going to mean uh, a higher frequency uh, processor, sampling, and math. <laughs> oh, math. We love math. Then I was thinking, we have these things, uh, the ADMP 401 MEMS microphone from Analog Devices. People who play guitar are always talking about tone. Oh my god, the tone. Did you hear the tone? The tone was so badass, man. I don't even freaking believe that. Um, yeah, crazy. Uh, but let's, you know, you, you, you look at these pickups, right? This, this is an electromagnetic thing, and yeah, body shapes and woods and all that sort of come into play um, because you get sound that reverberates in the solid wood, but it always comes back to the pickup, right? So the pickup is picking up, like, you know, microphonics from the solid body or the hollow body, as the case may be, and translates that back into the the strings and the fields that create the sound okay um and they're always located in the same places right for for your standard humbucker situation you got one here you got one here and if you got like a three coil you usually have one here you might have something like a steve morse signature where you got this 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 and if you switch the switch it does one up here and yeah. um but check this out if you were to take one of these admp mems microphones and like tack it physically on the body in various locations, you can really, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that you can get some pretty wacky waveforms out of this, especially given a body shape like this, right? Because you're not having sound bounce around and then come back to this location. You're going out to such and such location and seeing what's actually there as far as the vibration is concerned, okay? So, I don't think anybody's done this yet. I went for a quick cursory look on the web to see if anybody had experimented this way, and I didn't see anything. So I think it's about time that somebody do this. So I picked up parts for this already. I got three, count them, three, of the ADMP breakouts, ADMP 401 breakouts that we have. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put them in various locations. I figure, gotta have one out here, cause that's just wacky. Um, maybe another one down here, and maybe a third one out on the headstock, although I'd have to have wires out there and that would really jack with the playing. Um, like the playing can deserve or handle any more jacking with. But after putting three of these on, uh, I'm going to mix them all into a single 
op amp mixer and then take sound out that way, okay? In this way, I'm gonna try to create some new sounds. And in fact, I think I wanna do that before I wanna do the LED display. So the last thing uh, is this pickup coil that I've been talking about incessantly. Um, remember, I, yeah, that was good. You remember I talked about this and you wrap the coil around the thing, da 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 da. Okay, let me draw a very, very basically what this design is, okay? You have like your uh, inductor, which will be wrapped around this. And then you want to tune this guy with a capacitor. I have never talked about this. Um, th this. This is primarily, the discussion of what this circuit is and how it works is why um, it'll take time to describe it. <laughs> because what happens between these two components is called resonance and it happens uh, at a certain frequency and it happens because these two things operate 180 degrees out of phase with each other. Um, and that bears a pretty long explanation by itself and we really ought to talk about it just because it's cool. Um, but after that, it's really just um, uh, yeah, that was a bad drawing. An op amp to uh, your headphones, and 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 that's that's really it. That that's it. What I've really decided I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with that guitar with the ADMP 401s. Um, this one I can do secondarily, and I can kind of spring it on you guys uh, in one of the episodes because I can probably whip this thing up pretty quick. And then we can do a description, and I can show you all the parts that I made, and blah 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 blah, and it all look like junk. The telescope, I will probably start designing a new mount for it. Like I said before, that one is gonna be a lot of mechanical work. Um, but it's something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I hooked up with one of the directors at SparkFun, Chris Clark, our director of IT, and he's big into astronomy too, so when, when he came over one night, we started like, oh, yeah, this is great, man, and we totally geeked out about it, so I got a really big motive to do that thing, but that's going to take a long time. So that one's going to be on the back burner for a bit. The guitar is going to start first, and what I'm going to try to do is get audio by the next episode. Okay, and I don't know if it's gonna have the full mixer, but I'll have something to show you with the guitar for the ADMP 401s. This thing, I'll start whipping it up in my spare time. The, the, the big time consumer is just winding the inductor. It's not really that hard. It just takes a little bit of time to do. So thanks for watching. Uh, that's uh, all for July. Those are the projects uh, that I'm looking at. That's the sequence that I expect are going to occur in. As always, keep the questions coming. You can send them to feedback at sparkfun.com with according to Pete in the subject line, or you can post them down below where we'd love to see them. And there you go. I'll see you next month. Woo!